The Boar and the Ass A little scoundrel of an ass, happening to meet with a boar, had a mind to be arch upon him, and so, says he, Your humble servant. The boar, somewhat nettled at his familiarity, bristled up to him and told him he was surprised to hear him utter so impudent an untruth, and was going to show his resentment by giving him a rip in the flank, but wisely stifling his passion, he contented himself with saying, Go, you sorry beast! I do not care to foul my tusks with the blood of so base a creature. Dignity cannot afford to quarrel with its inferiors. THE FOX AND THE GOAT A fox, having fallen into a well, could find no means of escape. A goat, overcome with thirst, came to the well, and seeing the fox inquired if the water was good. The fox, concealing his sad plight under a merry guise, indulged in lavish praise of the water, saying it was beyond measure excellent, and encouraged him to descend. The goat, mindful only of his thirst, thoughtlessly jumped down, when, just as he quenched his thirst, the fox informed him of the difficulty they were both in, and suggested a scheme for their common escape. If, said he, you will place your forefeet upon the wall, and bend your head, I will run up your back and escape, and will help you out. On the goat readily assenting to this proposal, the fox leaped upon his back, and, steadying himself with the goat's horns, reached in safety the mouth of the well, and immediately made off as fast as he could. The goat upbraided him with the breach of his bargain, when he turned round and cried out, you foolish fellow, if you had as many brains in your head as you have hairs in your beard, you would never have gone down before you had inspected the way up, nor have exposed yourself to danger from which you had determined upon no means of escape. Look before you leap. THE OXEN AND THE BUTCHERS The oxen, once upon a time, sought to destroy the butchers, who practiced a trade destructive to their race. They assembled on a certain day to carry out their purpose, and sharpened their horns for the contest. One of them, an exceedingly old one, for many a field had he plowed, thus spoke. These butchers, it is true, slaughter us, but they do so with skillful hands, and with no unnecessary pain. If we get rid of them, we shall fall into the hands of unskillful operators, and thus suffer a double death. For you may be assured that, though all the butchers should perish, yet will men ever want beef. Do not be in a hurry to change one evil for another. THE HORSE AND HIS RIDER A horse soldier took great pains with his charger. As long as the war lasted, he looked upon him as his fellow helper in all emergencies, and fed him carefully with hay and corn. When the war was over, he only allowed him chaff to eat, and made him carry heavy loads of wood, and subjected him to much slavish drudgery and ill-treatment. War, however, being again proclaimed, the soldier put on his charger its military trappings, and mounted, being clad in his heavy coat of mail. The horse fell down straight away under the weight, no longer equal to the burden, and said to his master, You must now go to the war on foot, for you have transformed me from a horse into an ass. He who slights his friends when they are not needed must not expect them to serve him when he needs them. THE DOG AND THE HARE A hound, having started a hare on the hillside, pursued her for some distance, at one time biting her with his teeth, as if he would take her life, and at another time fawning upon her, as if in play with another dog. The hare said to him, I wish you would act sincerely by me, and show yourself in your true colors. If you are a friend, why do you bite me so hard? If you are an enemy, 
Why do you fawn on me? There are no friends whom you know not whether to trust or to distrust. THE FAWN AND HIS MOTHER A young fawn once said to his mother, You are larger than a dog, and swifter, and more used to running. Why then, O oh mother, are you always in such a terrible fright of the hounds? She smiled and said, I know full well, my son, that all you say is true. I have the advantages you mention, but yet when I hear the bark of a single dog, I feel ready to faint. No arguments will give courage to the coward. THE LARK AND HER YOUNG ONES A lark had made her nest in the young green wheat. The brood had almost grown when the owner of the field, overlooking his crop, said, I must send to all my neighbors to help me with my harvest. One of the young larks heard him, and asked his mother to what place they should move for safety. There was no occasion to move yet, my son, she replied. The owner of the field came a few days later and said, I will come myself tomorrow and will get in the harvest. Then the lark said to her brood, It is time now to be off. He no longer trusts to his friends, but will reap the field himself. Self-help is the best help. THE BOWMAN AND THE LION A very skillful bowman went to the mountains in search of game. All the beasts of the forest fled at his approach. The lion alone challenged him to combat. The bowman immediately let fly an arrow, and said to the lion, I send thee my messenger, that from him thou mayest learn what I myself shall be when I assail thee. The lion, thus wounded, rushed away in great fear, and, on a fox exhorting him to be of good courage and not to run away at the first attack, he replied, You counsel me in vain. For if he sends so fearful a messenger, how shall I abide the attack of the man himself? A man who can strike from a distance is no pleasant neighbor. THE BOY AND THE FILBERTS A boy put his hand into a pitcher full of filberts. He grasped as many as he could possibly hold, but when he endeavored to pull out his hand, he was prevented from doing so by the neck of the pitcher, which was much smaller than his closed hand. Unwilling to lose his filberts, and yet unable to withdraw his hand, he burst into tears, and bitterly lamented his disappointment. A bystander said to him, Be satisfied with half the quantity, and you will readily draw out your hand. Do not attempt too much at once. THE WOMAN AND HER HEN A woman possessed a hen that gave her an egg every day. She often thought with herself how she might obtain two eggs daily instead of one, and at last, to gain her purpose, determined to give the hen a double allowance of barley. From that day the hen became fat and sleek, and never once laid another egg. Covetousness overreacheth itself. THE LAMB AND THE WOLF A wolf pursued a lamb which fled for refuge to a certain temple. The wolf called out to him and said, The priest will slay you in sacrifice if he should catch you. On which the lamb replied, It would be better for me to be sacrificed in the temple than to be eaten by you. It is safer to be among friends than enemies. THE BEAR AND THE GARDENER A gardener, who lived alone, became discontented, and set out one day to seek a friend who would be a suitable companion. He had not gone far when he met a bear, whom he invited to come and live with him. The bear was a very silly one, who was also discontented with living alone, so he went home with the gardener very willingly. The gardener provided all the food, and the only service he required of the bear was to keep the flies off his face while he slept in the shade. One day 
a fly insisted upon lighting on the gardener's face, although he was brushed off again and again. The silly bear finally became so enraged that he threw a heavy stone upon it. He killed the fly, but alas, he also killed his friend. Better have no friend at all than a foolish one. THE HEIFER AND THE OX A heifer saw an ox hard at work, harnessed to a plough, and tormented him with the reflections on his unhappy fate in being compelled to labor. Shortly afterward, at the harvest home, the owner released the ox from his yoke, but bound the heifer with cords, and led her away to the altar to be slain in honor of the festival. The ox saw what was being done, and said to the heifer, for this you were allowed to live in idleness, because you were presently to be sacrificed. The lives of the idle can best be spared. The Eagle and the Fox An eagle and a fox formed an intimate friendship, and decided to live near each other. The eagle built her nest in a tall tree, while the fox crept into the underwood and there produced her young. Not long after, when the fox was ranging for food, the eagle, being in want of provision for her young ones, swooped down and seized one of the little cubs, and feasted herself and brood. The fox, on her return, discovering what had happened, was less grieved for the death of her young than for her inability to avenge them. A just retribution, however, quickly fell upon the eagle. While hovering near an altar on which some villagers were sacrificing a goat, she suddenly seized a piece of flesh, and carried with it to her nest a burning cinder. A strong breeze soon fanned the spark into a flame, and the eaglets, as yet unfledged and helpless, were roasted in their nest and dropped down dead at the bottom of the tree. The fox gobbled them up in the sight of the eagle. The tyrant is never safe from those whom he oppresses. THE HAWK AND THE NIGHTINGALE A nightingale, sitting aloft upon an oak, was seen by a hawk, who made a swoop down and seized him. The nightingale earnestly besought the hawk to let him go, saying that he was not big enough to satisfy the hunger of a hawk who ought to pursue the larger birds. The hawk said, I should indeed have lost my senses if I should let go food ready to my hand, for the sake of pursuing birds which are not yet even within sight. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. THE HEN AND THE SWALLOW A hen, finding the eggs of a viper, and carefully keeping them warm, nourished them into life. A swallow, observing what she had done, said, you silly creature, why have you hatched these vipers, which, when they shall have grown, will surely inflict injury on all of us, beginning with yourself? If we nourish evil, it will sooner or later turn upon us. THE HERDSMAN AND THE LOST BULL A herdsman, tending kine in a forest, lost a bull-calf from the fold. After a long and fruitless search, he made a vow that if he could only discover the thief who had stolen the calf, he would offer a lamb in sacrifice to the guardian deities of the forest. Not long afterwards, as he ascended a small hillock, he saw at its foot a lion feeding on the calf. Terrified at the sight, he lifted his eyes and his hands to heaven and said, Just now I vowed to offer a lamb to the guardian deities of the forest, if I could only find out who had robbed me. But now that I have discovered the thief, I would willingly add a full-grown bull to the calf I have lost, and give them both to the guardians of the forest, if I may only secure my own escape from this terrible lion in safety. That which we are anxious to find we are sometimes even more anxious to escape from when we have succeeded in finding it. THE SHEPHERD'S BOY AND WOLF A shepherd boy, who watched a flock of sheep near a village, brought out the villagers three or four times by crying out, Wolf! Wolf! And when his neighbors came to help him, 
laughed at them for their pains. The wolf, however, did truly come at last. The shepherd boy, now really alarmed, shouted in an agony of terror, Pray do come and help me! The wolf is killing the sheep! But no one paid any heed to his cries. There is no believing a liar, even when he speaks the truth. THE HAWK, THE KITE, AND THE PIGEONS The pigeons, terrified by the appearance of a kite, called upon the hawk to defend them. He at once consented. When they had admitted him into the coat, they found that he made more havoc and slew a larger number of them in a single day than the kite could possibly pounce upon in a whole year. Avoid a remedy that is worse than the disease. THE FARMER AND THE CRANES Some cranes made their feeding grounds on some plow lands newly sown with wheat. For a long time the farmer, brandishing an empty sling, chased them away by the terror he inspired. But when the birds found that the sling was only swung in the air, they ceased to take any notice of it and would not move. The farmer, on seeing this, charged his sling with stones and killed a great number. They at once forsook his plough-lands and cried to each other, It is time for us to be off, for this man is no longer content to scare us, but begins to show us in earnest what he can do. If words suffice not, blows must follow. THE CAT AND THE MICE A certain house was overrun with mice. A cat, discovering this, made her way into it and began to catch and eat them one by one. The mice, being continually devoured, kept themselves close in their holes. The cat, no longer able to get at them, perceived that she must tempt them forth by some device. For this purpose she jumped upon a peg, and, suspending herself from it, pretended to be dead. When the mice came near, she pounced upon them and killed a great number. Pleased with the success of this trick, she tried another. She whitened herself with flour, and lay still on the heap of bags, as though she was one of them. The young mice crept dangerously near her, but an old one, peering stealthily out, said, Ah, my good madam, though you should turn into a real flour-bag, I will not come too near you. Avoid even appearance of danger. Thank you.